Uh, thanks for joining everyone. My name is Andrew. I lead uh, the, the sales and services teams here at Knapsack. My job is essentially to help folks uh, find Knapsack, learn about Knapsack, um, understand what it is that we do, um, understand how we can help, and then really chart a path to success and help uh, help deliver it. So what, what we're going to do today is uh, start with that first part, right? Get everyone a, a better sense of what Knapsack is by introducing you a little bit to our approach to this space, why we're here, why we do what we do, and, and how. Uh, and uh, and spend plenty of time in the product itself. Uh, and we'll leave some time here at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, drop them in uh, the chat or the Q&A or whatever features are available to you in Zoom, and uh, we'll do our best to get to those here at the end. So um, a little bit of uh, background on Knapsack and sort of the problem we set out to solve here. You know, we, we've been working in design systems for a long time um, at big software companies, you know, and consulting uh, capacities, helping teams, you know, do everything from defined governance models to technically build the system and build products. And what we continually have seen in the past several years is there's one design system often, but the, the reality of how that is used across teams is, um, is not as unified, right? Design and, and engineering have very different tool sets for how they interact with and use that system to build products. Uh, those often don't really have any connection to them or a very loose connection at best. And then we create these very one-way streams that go from the system team down to product teams, uh, using that system to design, build products. And, you know, if their needs aren't met, we often find that they sort of start to spin off on their own, right? And so while we have this one system as a company uh, or as a product organization, it's used differently, not as a single system. And then it often tends to lead to multiple variations and versions of the system or subsystems, uh, at, at which point, you know, many teams tend to start over or, or lose traction, right? And so, you know, we set out to build something that was a little more scalable and that would really help teams uh, solve this this challenge across functions and between sort of all the folks that work on product, whether you're in the design system team or or creating a user experience. And so what what we set out to provide here is a more of a unified system, a unified platform for your system that allows uh, everyone who works on it, not just design and engineering, but copy and product and QA and accessibility, uh, everyone to be in and and working in the same workspace, routing their workflows through a single tool, single platform and give you everything you need to not only ship that system, but also engage and collaborate with the teams that use it, right? We all know that uh, nothing uh, in the system is valuable unless we get adoption. And we've really seen that engagement and contribution and, and that sort of collaborative workflow is key to that adoption. So, you know, what, what do we ultimately do? What is the value that Knapsack provides with this platform by bringing everyone together? You know, it's, it's not just about being in one space. It's, it's really about that we're organizing everything that's happening around code, right? The, the experiences that the users of your products, whether you're um, building something internally for your investment analyst or you're, you know, building a car dashboard or a mobile app, you know, the thing that the users are interacting with is, is a coded experience. It's what the engineers are building. And so we need to have design involved. We need to have all the disciplines involved, but organizing and, and working around code that they can get their hands on. Uh, and we need that code to be accurate, right? We need to render it in real time. We need to use production quality and even the production elements of your system so that we have the confidence to know that what we're looking at uh, is really what the users are going to see and what's going to be powering the, the product uh, development workflow. Uh, documentation is a big part of systems. It's by no means the only part, uh, but we need to provide documentation that doesn't get out of date. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to juggle here between design and code standards and making sure that uh, the system, what people are looking at when they think of the system, is always accurate with what's really going out the door. That's uh, a key part of it. And then for teams that don't already have solutions in place to, to ship the system, right, to get to that final step of, of really enabling the engineers to build those products, um, we can provide a lot of the tools out of the box or integrate with those tools uh, that you already do have, uh, which is, you know, again, how we provide that confidence that you know you're looking at the thing your users are seeing. So, you know, a simple way to think of this is that, you know, what we do is we, we integrate really tightly with what design has and where they're working and really closely with where engineering is working and how they're actually shipping and building product so that we can really be that infrastructure of your system that's, that's cross-team, cross-organization, cross-functional, um, while you can work on the content in terms of the design, the code, the, the guidelines, uh, the assets, and the behaviors, the workflows, and, and the sort of cultural change management, uh, and not to worry so much about the tool stack. Uh, it's important to mention we are really built for the enterprise, right? We uh, we work with large organizations, complex organizations, and you know even smaller organizations that just have have those sophisticated needs, uh, whether it's single sign-on or, or high security compliance or just the ability to really get in and integrate with whatever real tools they're already using because it's hard to make changes uh, to some of the underlying tech in in a lot of these organizations. So tactically speaking, what is in Knapsack? 
um, you know, again, it's this end to end platform that you have everything that you need, or we can come in and fill the gaps if you have some pieces in place. Um, dynamic documentation with live connections to design and code uh, that auto updates. Uh, token management systems that let you pull in tokens from design sources or manage them and define them in the web, give you a place to manage things that don't live in design tools today, like uh, animation tokens, um, and also make sure that they're being transformed into usable styling code, right? Uh, whether that's CSS for the web or you know, Swift for your iOS apps, uh, making sure that right off the bat, as soon as you define your brand really in, in tokens, you can use them and document them. Uh, we mentioned sort of the importance of connection to production code. You know, we we allow anyone with the right permissions to assemble and build experiences using real production code. Uh, and for developers, when you're lurking locally, we have a real-time playground. So, you know, you hit save on your React, you know, button.tsx file, and you see that update, update in our UI. Um, so really, really nice experience when you're working with code and with production code and cutting out a lot of overhead when it comes to maintaining the docs or, or giving visibility to designers or even just reviewing the, the engineering work. Uh, and then tying really closely with your, your CI CD workflow, um, you can build your system with Knapsack or you can you know, pull in a production system. Knapsack can power things like your testing endpoints. We can you know, provide the tokens that generate your styling. Uh, we never introduce production dependencies. So you know, your, your app running is never dependent on us, but we can really accelerate the process of building it and, and getting it out the door. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, security is a big part of what we do and, and just sort of enterprise readiness. Uh, so whether that's, you know, being able to make the workspace public or being security conscious or, uh, you know, having some bespoke services, uh, that's a big uh, part of our DNA as well. So that's enough in the slides. Uh, you know, let's get over and, and show you the actual platform. Um, we're going to show you a little bit in a demo here, and then I want to show you the uh, the power of it in terms of a real use case of, of what it means you can do when you pull all these teams in, into a single connected platform. Uh, so uh, here we are in, in what we call a workspace. Um, this is my documentation, but also my collaboration and sort of management area for the system. Um, you know, you'll see here we have our documentation section as well as a section for managing all of our tokens. Uh, so right off the bat, you know, I can give everybody uh, with the right permissions access to see what we use for all of our uh, all of our design tokens and our atomic decisions right here. In some cases, we have raw values. In some cases, tokens. Uh, these smallest elements are, are mapped to other colors. We've built out some sort of infrastructure. Um, and it's not just about what we have in design, right? I mentioned earlier, we have support for anything you can tokenize, right? If you want to make a decision around the speed at which your, uh, your uh, 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 animations happen, uh, the delay timing, we, we can do all that you know, here through our tools. Um, but then we get much richer when we get into documentation. Um, you'll see uh, we can go a little bit further with brand documentation in terms of our, our uh, token docs here. These are dynamic. They're showing you in real time what, um, what is in the underlying source. Uh, great tools for things like breakpoints that let you see where do those breakpoints that we use in products fall across devices so you can make smart decisions while you're thinking about you know, how, to, how to most quickly get a, a new solution out. Um, and uh, uh, you know all sorts of different tokens that we can document here. And again, the, the, the value is knowing that this is up to date and what's in product. Right. But as we get into more complex elements like components, this is really where Knapsack can, can shine. Um, if I jump into something like our card here, you'll see that we've brought together you know, our static docs um, that we have here around do's and don'ts, um, dynamic elements that actually use the production system. So we've, we've pulled in uh, an author component, a button component, and actually a designer has assembled this card using the card component template. Uh, and uh, and then put it in here. So this is the same thing you'd see on your website. It's using the exact same code, pulling in the same way that engineers would to build your product, which means as they update the system, your docs change as well, right? And right next to all these great do docs, we have uh, things like our, our design. Uh, this is embedding, in this case, Figma, so I can see in real time what the designer is looking at. Uh, similarly, this will update if the designer is, is changing their Figma file, uh, gives you access to it for things like uh, the inspector tools, um, and, and the ability to dissect those files. And on the flip side in Figma, you know, we, we encourage customers to create links um, in the documentation feature for each component that just guide people back to Knapsack, right? So we have a, a really harmonious workflow. Uh, and then here on the React tab, in this case, I've connected one framework, it's React. Uh, this is the, the templating language used for our website. And you see here, I have, um, you know, some of these, these cards here. Uh, so this is where, you know, anybody, again, with the right permissions can come in and sort of see what's possible with the system. Uh, let's see, can I put a second button in my component? Uh, you know, I want to test out the secondary button, can't have two primaries. 
um, you know, also uh, maybe may change some of the, the language here. You know, our, our new our content guidelines say we should use four exclamation points. So you know, now I'm, I've created something that I can, you know, if I'm an editor, memorialize, right? These are the experiences that you'll see um, show up in docs, like I showed a moment ago. I can, uh, you know, share this externally. These can all actually be, you know, passed into, uh, whether it's in an email thread to the marketer or uh, to, you know, a, a visual regression testing tool, accessibility testing tool. You know, designers can, can go in and make these experiences with real production code, right? All the way up to page level and, and sort of full prototyping um, using what your team has really built, right? So that, that opens up some real possibilities around, you know, how much do we need to do high fidelity design of every experience when we can all get together around code? And then focus that design effort on you know things that that really need new effort and new innovation. Um, and just to show you some of the editing experience, if I go back over to our usage tab here and pop out of um, uh, preview mode into edit mode, you know this block here is one that I I can go in and choose you know which which of these examples. I was just messing around with this. It's no longer one author one CTA. Uh, there's two CTAs, um, but I can switch to that one and say, hey, in this case, I want to show the code snippet and. You know, there's nothing we're generating here. This is your code just with some data passed in based on the specific implementation. All right, so we're starting to see the power of how we pull all these things together into a, a single environment here. Um, you know, and it, it's worth noting that things can really go any direction, right? The the, the value of an end-to-end -end platform is that you know, not only do I have code connected here once it's built, but I can manage the workflow to get there. You see here, we have a section of uh, proposed patterns maybe that the team has added that aren't from the, the core system team. These came from product designers and engineers. Um, someone's proposed a message pattern. There's no code here. I just have my design docs. I have um, the actual Figma component with all the variations in this case that they've built. Um, or maybe in other cases, I have just a spec, right? But no, uh, no components. Um, and in other cases, you'll see things like we have some simple patterns here that we never, uh, we never designed, but the engineering team has built, or we never have a sort of official component for, but it exists in React, in web components. We have a raw HTML version. Uh, you'll see we can support a, a lot of these different frameworks, bring them into a single place, and you know, really just make it easy to see what you have and, and manage both the, the process of reuse as well as you know, just, just manage the team that's, that's working on these. Sometimes just bringing all the teams and disciplines and technologies into one place, um, putting a circle around it. And using some statuses is a great way to just get teams aligned and, and reduce the confusion and sort of inefficiency of, of digital production today. So um, I want to shift and show a little bit of just a, a workflow or a condensed workflow here of, of really kind of the power of having this all connected into one place. Right. So um, I'm going to switch over to, to a local environment of Knapsack. You'll see it looks very similar. Right. This is what you can use as a developer. Um, you know, what I've done is I've pulled down. Uh, an instance, you know, the, the repo where my system lives, where Knapsack's deployed. I have a Visual Studio code here, and I have uh, I have booted up a local server, right? So instead of looking at a website out in the cloud on Knapsack service, I'm looking at um, a local environment uh, that uses our our sort of web app, our static web app. And so this allows me to interact with my system in real time and shortcut any like build processes or deployments because that's all happening in the background. So what what that allows me to show here is the process of making a design decision and see that updated in documentation, in brand implementation, um, in minute, you know, uh, small uh, different de uh, design system elements, as well as in more uh, rich compiled experiences. So I've, I've, I'm cutting some corners here for the sake of a demo. I've built a single page here called demo. Um, and to map to all those things I just said, I have a, a header here of the, you know, we do some styling in our, our design system site. Um, you'll see the background color. I'm actually using our primary brand token, color brand primary. Um, for the title color, I'm using um, color brand tertiary. I should use a text font or a text color, but it's a demo. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm, that's, that's an example of my brand implementation somewhere, very atomic properties being used. Um, here I have our brand tokens defined. This is our design token content block. Um, I just only am showing the brand group um, and I'm showing it as, as uh, color swatches. And this is a, a, another way besides the, the main token area I showed at the beginning, where you can actually edit values. So I can edit individual values, um, or I can map tokens to others. I'm going to come back to this as part of this workflow. I mean, you see I have the brand primary as well as the tertiary I'm using up for that text. And then here I've implemented some examples of buttons. This is a block we have that shows dynamic documentation. Um, it, it automatically loops over a, a built component. In this case, I'm going over the prop name of size 
And it's just showing me all the different size outputs. I could change this to something like style and it would show me all the different colors um, or, uh, you know, uh, disabled, which shows me a true or false, you know, is that disabled. So it's just a, it's a great way to kind of build out docs without having to um, implement every piece yourself. Uh, I'm going to go back to, to size. So these are all using uh, essentially CSS that's generated from our color brand primary. See the hover state uses secondary. Uh, and then here I have a big, a big card, which I built using a, a, the little prototyping playground that is the card using some CSS in the text as well as in this button. Um, so this is an example of a more complex element, you know, production experience that, that was built using the system styles and, and components. And so what's great about the local environment here is you'll see all these updates essentially in real time. So I'm going to go and I'm going to change our primary brand color to, you know, something just a little more kind of pinkish. You see that the header updates automatically. I didn't even save. Um, let's change the uh, this to something that is a little bit of a darker green. And uh, we're going to make this, you know, what? I'm going to make this something that's actually borderline accessible. Uh, we'll go down here and we'll turn this into uh, just some black which I shouldn't have done, but um, I'm going to do dark gray, right? And you're seeing some things update here, right? So th the header is obviously updating because it's just mapped to those, those same styles that I used. Um, background colors using color brand primary. Um, I've got, you know, these, these swatches where I did the work. So the documentation updated automatically. Uh, and down here, I need to refresh. No, I didn't. I've got, you know, the implementation showing how this would reflect in a, in a built experience in styles in an implemented button. I don't know why we changed the brand colors to what we did, but you know, here after just a couple seconds, I've sort of shown the power of having this stuff all connected into one uh, without having to, um, you know, go and make ten thousand Jira tickets or ask everybody to do a bunch of stuff. So that um, I think that that really kind of highlights the best end-to-end -end example of Knapsack, right? By putting all these things together, by taking documentation, collaboration, and management experiences and connecting them to the way that you ship and build your products or, or parts of your products, right? We're, we're really bringing teams together. We're accelerating uh, everything from feedback loops to, to product development. We've seen, you know, an average of over 15% time saving in terms of uh, time to release individual features using Knapsack uh, and a, a well-built system. So, you know, we're really excited for what we can do for your team. 